Welcome to version 4 of my history of Sony Pictures Television. As before, I am going to narrate it all the way from the studio's foundation in 1947. This version contains the fruits of continued research into the history of the company and also new history that has in fact taken place since the publication of the previous video. If you have not watched the previous versions of this video, please let me take you through the legend first. Anything in a blue box is a distinct corporate entity which will usually end with Inc, LLC or Limited. Anything in a green box is a legally recognized trading name used by a person, a company or more than one company. Anything in a red box is either an internal corporate division, referred to in company literature but nothing else, or a brand name used on screen that isn't a legally recognized trading name. The white writing is the line of business in which a particular company is involved. So anyway, without any further ado, let's get to the rest of the video. The history of Sony Pictures Television essentially began in 1947 with a television commercial production firm known as Pioneer Telefilms, set up by Ralph M. Cohn. There's not really much to say here, except that Ralph Cohn happened to be the nephew of Harry Cohn, who was in charge of Columbia Pictures. With the Cohns being infamous for nepotism, as was the norm in the industry at the time, it was therefore no surprise that Pioneer Telefilms was acquired by Columbia Pictures. The company was reincorporated as Screen Gems Inc. in New York, a name borrowed from Columbia's dormant cartoon subsidiary in California, which had grown out of Margaret Winkler's distribution firm many years previously. It started trading on April 15, 1949. The newly incorporated wholly owned subsidiary of Columbia Pictures Corporation continued to produce television commercials for the next two years. In Sony's PR, Screen Gems is often glorified as the first television studio ever established by a major Hollywood studio. However, as I've just explained, Columbia didn't actually establish Screen Gems in 1948. They merely acquired it, and it started operating in 1949. Therefore, the first such company may actually have been Paramount Television Productions, set up by a rival studio in 1948, to program the ill-fated Paramount Television Network. However, this also started operating in 1949, so we should probably give Sony the benefit of the doubt. 1951 was the year in which Screen Gems became a fully-fledged television studio. It moved into the new and lucrative field of telefilm syndication and started producing its own television series in 1952. It began using an animated logo at this point. There was still a mentality in Hollywood at this point that movie studios shouldn't be involved in the new, this new threatening medium of television. Sound familiar? Anyway, as if the viewers at home gave two hoots about this, the Screen Gems logo used at this time was designed to conceal the connection to Columbia Pictures. Stars shining inside a TV tube gave no apparent symbolic link to the parent company, but did firmly emphasize that Screen Gems was a television studio. The full corporate name was given to show that the studio was a distinct corporate entity. Programs are billed as being either a Screen Gems Inc. production or presentation, depending on whether or not Screen Gems had produced the show itself. In 1954, the word film was added to the logo to emphasize that the shows were pre-recorded and transmitted on film, which was still something of a novelty back then. 1955 was the year when the Hollywood studios decided to stop being ridiculously covert about their involvement in television, except ironically Paramount, which seemed to go in the opposite direction around this time. As such, August saw the introduction of a new Screen Gems logo, rendering the Columbia Torch Lady in all her glory. Uh, the wording was the same, sans the word ink. The byline television subsidiary Columbia Pictures Corporation was added in a newfound zeal to acknowledge the parent company. The next year saw further integration with Columbia, with Screen Gems finally syndicating its parents' feature films. Screen Gems also acquired another syndication company, Serials Inc., also known as Go Television Films, which held syndication rights to a very impressive library of film and television. In September, there was an interstate merger between the television company, incorporated in New York, the dormant cartoon company that I mentioned earlier, which was incorporated in California, and Serials Inc. 
the newly combined entity retained the name used by two of its predecessors, was incorporated in California, and issued 89% of its stock to Columbia Pictures. In 1957, Screen Gems made another investment. It acquired a 20% stake in a startup television animation studio, HB Enterprises Inc., founded by Bill Hanna and Joe Barbara, former producers at the freshly shut down MGM Cartoon Studio. This investment included a 10 year deal whereby Screen Gems would distribute the HP Studios output. This year also saw the creation of Briskin Productions Inc., an entity under the management of studio veteran Irving Briskin, set up to run Screen Gems production operations at Columbia Pictures Studio on Gower Street, Hollywood. In 1958, Screen Gems celebrated the 10th anniversary of its incorporation in New York and seemingly temporarily did away with the distinction between film production and film presentation. This year also saw a subtle alteration to the HP Enterprises logo as well as the death of Harry Cohn from a heart attack. Columbia Pictures expanded into music this year with Colpix Records, a recording company set up as a division of Columbia Pictures Corporation and SG Music Corporation, a publishing company set up as a subsidiary of Screen Gems. In 1959, Screen Gems returned to the production of television commercials by acquiring Elliot Unger and Elliot Inc. This company was integrated as a division called EUE slash Screen Gems. Columbia itself also expanded into broadcasting via a new subsidiary, Columbia Pictures Electronics Company Inc., also, in 1959, HP Enterprises changed its name to the more widely recognized Hanna-Barbera Productions, Inc. In 1960, Screen Gems was in reincorporated in Delaware and continued to have 89% of its stock owned by Columbia Pictures. Shortly before this change came a new logo, simply placing the company name around the torch lady's legs with no extra qualifying information. This information was usually instead supplied as a voiceover. This has been a Screen Gems film production from the Hollywood studios of Columbia Pictures. In 1961, the 11% of Screen Gems stock that hadn't been issued to Columbia was floated on the stock market. A new subsidiary was established, Audience Studies Inc., to test market television programs and commercials. At first, it serviced only Screen Gems and its divisions, but eventually branched out into the lucrative business of providing its services to other companies. This year also saw Screen Gems branching out into television broadcasting. 1963 saw the consolidation of many Columbia businesses under the Screen Gems banner. SG Music Corporation was merged with Columbia's other music publishing ventures to create Screen Gems Columbia Music Inc., a New York corporation jointly owned by Columbia and Screen Gems. Columbia Pictures Electronics merged with Screen Gems Broadcasting Operations as Screen Gems Broadcasting Corporation, a subsidiary of Screen Gems. As well as that, Briskin Productions was folded back into Screen Gems. Later in that year, the ever-majestic Torch Lady was impeached as Screen Gems' corporate logo in favor of a weird animation with dancing lines and flashing circles. A voiceover continued to differentiate between production and presentation. A Screen Gems production. This may have coincided with Columbia Pictures decreasing its stake in Screen Gems to 88.64%. In 1965, Screen Gems changed its logo yet again. <laughs> The new logo involved a Latin letter S forming itself from a cheaply animated film reel, quite possibly a nod to the emphasis on the word film in previous logos. Its structure may also have been a veiled reference to that of the torch lady used by Columbia Pictures at the same time, with the red dot representing torchlight. Nevertheless, this logo has gained a great deal of infamy over the years, taking on such fond appellations as the S from Hell thanks in no small part to Eric Sade's cheap synthesizer music. This may once again have coincided with Columbia Pictures decreasing its stake in Screen Gems, this time to 87.1%. With the separation of the affairs of Columbia and Screen Gems, Colpix Records was no longer enough to exploit Columbia's full value on the music side of things, so it was replaced in 1966 by Col Gems Records Inc., which, as the name suggested, was a 50-50 joint venture between Columbia and Screen Gems. 
Most notably, it released music recorded by the Monkees, who also had a television presence, thanks to Screen Gems. Its manufacturing and distribution was handled by RCA Records. Another adventure involving the Monkees was Interplanetary Licensing and Merchandising Inc., which licensed their brand for use on lunchboxes and other such things. Between 1966 and 1967, Columbia's shareholding in Screen Gems decreased to 86.9%. At the start of 1967, the Screen Gems Hanna Barbera deal expired and was not renewed. Instead, Hanna Barbera was acquired outright by the Taft Broadcasting Company, thus ending its association with Columbia in every way. In 1968, the trend of separation made a complete about turn, with Columbia and Screen Gems merging into a single entity. This involved Columbia Pictures paying a lot to Screen Gems shareholders in both cash and stock. Almost all the two companies' non-music subsidiaries became divisions of a new diversified media company, Columbia Pictures Industries, Inc., incorporated in New York. This year also saw the establishment of a new record label, SGC Records, a division of Screen Gems Columbia Music. The manufacturing and distribution for this label was handled by Atlantic Records. 1969 saw more changes on the music side of things. Columbia Pictures Industries acquired Bell Records Inc. and the two companies were soon merged into a new Columbia Pictures Industries incorporated in Delaware. Call Gems Records, still a distinct entity, established its own publishing company, Call Gems Music Corporation. In 1970, following the reincorporation of Columbia Pictures Industries in Delaware, the Screen Gems jingle was shortened, removing the three staccato notes. In 1971, SGC Records and Call Gems Records were both shut down, but Screen Gems Columbia Music and Call Gems Music continued as music publishing companies. In 1972, Audience Studies Inc. was sold off. As well as that, Columbia Pictures Industries merged its studios with those of Warner Brothers to form the Burbank Studios, which I thought I should mention even though I haven't seen fit to actually show it in the diagram. In 1973, the animated logos for Columbia Divisions took on the byline A Division of Columbia Pictures Industries, Inc., in line with the names used on copyright notices. Late 1974 saw quite a bit of reorganization at Columbia Pictures Industries. A new record company was formed known as Arista Records, Inc., the operations of Bell Records, along with any holdings left over from Colpix, Colgems, and SGC, were folded into the new label. More importantly, since this video is about television, Screen Gems' production and distribution operations were reorganized under the name Columbia Pictures Television, which used a new logo loosely based on the S. It appears to have been a placeholder logo. Screen Gems Broadcasting Operations, on the other hand, became part of the main corporation. In 1975, Columbia Pictures Industries started selling off some of its broadcasting operations. It also introduced a new print logo, a semi-hexacosogram in a semicircle, representing the light from the lady's torch, rather than the torch itself as the previous print logo had done. It has become known as the Sunburst. EUE slash Screen Gems started using this as its logo as well. In June 1976, a full animated version of the Sunburst debuted on the film Murder by Death. It used a st still shot of the previous logo, combined with brand new visual effects by Robert Abel, with music by Suzanne Ciani. <laughs> A short television version soon followed. Columbia Pictures Industries instituted a color code for its divisions at this point. Film was blue, television was orange. There were some divestments in August, including a television station and Columbia's music publishing subsidiaries. Screen Gems Columbia Music, renamed to Screen Gems EMI Music Inc., and Call Gems Music Corporation, renamed to Call Gems EMI Music Inc., 
results to the UK record label EMI. 1977 saw Columbia's exit from the broadcasting business as it sold its last station. Interplanetary licensing and merchandising was renamed to International Marketing I Limited. In 1979, Columbia finally exited the music industry, selling Arista Records to Ariola, a Bertelsmann division which would later be the foundation for BMG. Ironically, BMG would later merge with Sony Music in 2004. On the television side, Columbia acquired TOY Productions, formerly Bud Yorkin Productions, and maintained it briefly as a subsidiary. 1980 saw the acquisition of Ray Star Films from Ray Stark, who had previously sold his older films to Columbia in 1974. This company included Ray Star Features Inc. and Ray Star Television Inc. In June 1981, Columbia Pictures did away with the Sunburst logo, instead experimenting with something thematically similar, but with significantly different animation. A television version didn't come until later. Then, in August, Time Life Films, the film and television arm of Time Inc., was sold to Columbia Pictures Industries and folded into Columbia Pictures Television. On April 23, 1982, TOI Productions was folded into Columbia Pictures Television after the sitcom One of the Boys ended. In June, Columbia Pictures Industries was bought by the Coca-Cola Company, for cash and stock worth $1.025 billion via a new subsidiary, Coca-Cola Pictures Inc. Straight afterwards, Coke incorporated an entity called CPT Holdings Inc. again in Delaware. The purpose of this entity was to take over the rights holding of old Columbia Pictures television shows, mostly from the Screen Gems days. It also held a new division, Columbia Pictures International Television, responsible for distributing the Columbia Pictures Library for television all over the world. Following this, the new version of The Torch Lady introduced in 1981 finally got a television version using a subtly altered version of Suzanne Ciani's music from the previous logo. It sported a byline announcing the company's new ownership which, in combination with the music that sounds kind of like soda pouring, created a strong association between this logo type and Coke even though it had really been devised a year before the association between the two companies. It is also noteworthy that the colour coding was preserved with these new logos. The text and part of the lady's robe were blue in the film logo and gold or orange on the television logo. In September, Columbia Pictures Industries was merged into Coca-Cola Pictures, which took on the same name. On April 19, 1983, Columbia Pictures, Home Box Office, and CBS created a joint venture film production company, TriStar Pictures, incorporated in Delaware. It had previously been announced under the codename Nova. Each partner owned 25.5%, with the remaining 23.5% floated on the stock market. Two days later, a New York subsidiary was established. The next month, an extra subsidiary of Raystar Television was formed, known as Raystar Productions, Inc. Then in August, EUE slash Screen Gems was spun off as a New York corporation called EUE slash Screen Gems Limited. It was sold to longtime executive George Cooney and took with it the Screen Gems S trademark. In 1984, Coke decided to demerge Columbia Pictures and Columbia Pictures Television. Columbia Pictures Industries retained the film division, but the television division was transferred in its entirety to CPT Holdings. As such, because this is a television video, Columbia Pictures Industries will no longer appear. This reorganization was carried out as part of the establishment of a new television group. One of the units of this group was, of course, Raystar Television, but there were also a few new ones. Distribution rights to shows from the Screen Gems days were transferred into Colex Enterprises, a new partnership with LBS Communications, formerly known as Lexington Broadcasting Services. Another arm of the group was the Television Program Source, a new distribution company, which was a joint venture between CPT, Alan Bennett, and Robert King. 
A hyphen was added to the name of TriStar Pictures and it released its first film, introducing an iconic new logo with a Pegasus. This company is staying in the video for the time being because it later got involved in television as well. On April 8th, 1985, the New York TriStar was dissolved and immediately reincorporated. Coca-Cola increased its television operations significantly in June with the acquisition of Norman Lear and Jerry Parencio's company. This media company mainly did business under the Tandem and Embassy names. The main corporation was Embassy Communications Inc., which controlled two companies named after its owners, Norman Lear Productions and Parencio Inc. These two companies jointly owned TAT Communications Company, a by then in-name only production company, and its international distribution subsidiary, TAT Communications International Inc. Norman Lear Productions owned Tandem Enterprises Inc., which owned a television production company, Tandem Productions Inc. It was also the limited partner in Embassy Films Associates, a film production company. The general partner was Embassy Films Inc., owned by the Parencio Company. The home video division of this partnership was Embassy Home Entertainment. It also had two in-name only units, Lear Pictures Inc. and Parencio Pictures Inc., which jointly traded under the older Embassy Pictures name. These companies jointly owned AEP Corp, which traded in California as EMB Pix Corp. The other branches of the Embassy Communications Company were Embassy Television, a production company, and Embassy Telecommunications, a distribution company. Once Coca-Cola bought the company, it transferred the copyright and trademark holdings of the Tandem companies into a new intellectual property company, Tandem Licensing Corp. It shut down Tandem's production operations, moving its shows to Embassy Television. However, Tandem Productions continued as an in-name only production company under Embassy. Coke also added a Coca-Cola byline to the Embassy Telecommunications logo. On 16th of November, CBS dropped out of TriStar and sold off its 25.5% stake to other parties. In early 1986, TriStar Pictures set up a television distribution company named Televentures in association with Stephen J. Cannell Productions and with slash Thomas slash Harris Productions. It then set up its own production division, TriStar Television. The same year, HBO sold about half its stake in the joint venture to Coca-Cola, so now Coke owned 38.5% and HBO 12.5%. On May 5th, 1986, a lot of reorganization happened. The operations of Embassy Television and Telecommunications were folded into Embassy Communications, which went from being a holding company to a full television company. Coke also set up a pay TV distribution division of this company. Tandem Productions was merged into its parent, which was renamed to Tandem Communications. Merv Griffin Enterprises was also acquired. The legal name for this company was Califon Productions Inc., named after Califon, New Jersey, a town in which Merv Griffin had previously owned a farm. This company produced Wheel of Fortune. It had two subsidiaries, Jeopardy Productions Inc. in charge of Jeopardy and Anthony Productions Inc. in charge of Dance Fever. There were different versions of the logo. On Wheel of Fortune, the Califon name was displayed, but not on the other two game shows. Around the same time, the operations of Embassy Films Associates were sold off to the Delorentis Entertainment Group, which is now Village Roadshow Pictures. However, the mess of in-name only units which comprise the company remained part of Coke for the time being. 
On August 28th, a lawsuit was settled with the acquisition by Columbia Pictures Television of Danny Arnold's company, 4D Productions Inc. Previously, it had used a nice witty logo. At this point, though, it was in name only and was soon merged into CPT. In September, TriStar Television started producing its first series, Downtown, so introduced a logo which was a shortened and poorly animated version of the film logo. Then, on November 20th, TriStar sold some stock to finance its acquisition of Lowe's Theatres. Coke's share decreased to 35% and HBO's to 12%. Four days later, CPT's and Embassy's production operations were merged under the name Columbia Embassy Television, but they continued to operate as separate entities. This was the first step in the creation of a new group, Coca-Cola Television. Raystar Productions was folded back in as a division of Raystar Television under the new studio. On December 22nd, a byline was added to the Merv Griffin Enterprises logo to reflect its new ownership. On January 8th, 1987, the process of creating the Coca-Cola Television Group was completed. The Columbia Pictures Television Group was dismantled, with its syndication operations all merged into a new company, Coca-Cola Telecommunications. Colex was dissolved, but Coke and LBS continued to jointly distribute several films and programs. Columbia Embassy continued to handle the syndication of its own programming, but the new company handled first-run and pay television. Business affairs, finance, administration and planning were handled by a fourth company, Coca-Cola Television Operations. The Embassy Communications logo was also changed slightly with a new version of the Coca-Cola byline. February 23rd saw the formation of another new entity, Coca-Cola Telecommunications Productions Inc., to handle first-run syndication production for Coca-Cola Telecommunications. Once again, there was a delay in Merv Griffin Enterprises' adoption of the new byline. It didn't change until June. On June the 1st, the New York TriStar was permanently merged into the Delaware one. In September, Dance Fever ended, so Anthony Productions was shut down. In December, Coke geared up to merge its entertainment operations into TriStar Pictures. It started on the 8th by setting up a holding company called CPE Holdings Inc. CPE stood for Columbia Pictures Entertainment. Columbia Pictures Industries, which itself underwent quite a bit of reorganization, and Coca-Cola Television were transferred into this new holding company over the next few days. On the 11th, Embassy Communications was moved under a new company called LEP Holdings Inc. as the first step in reorganizing the television group. On the 21st, the transaction was completed. Coke transferred CPE Holdings into TriStar in exchange for increasing its shareholding from 35% to 80%. TriStar Pictures was then renamed to Columbia Pictures Entertainment Inc. On January 1st, 1988, Columbia Embassy Television and Coca-Cola Television were combined under TriStar Television as Columbia Pictures Television. Merv Griffin Enterprises continued to operate as it had previously. Over the next few days, the logos were updated to reflect this reorganization, with Embassy's logo disappearing on January 2nd, and CPT's byline being changed on January 4th with some new music to boot. It was around this time that Coke decreased its stake from 80% to 49% by distributing 31% out as a one-time dividend to its own shareholders. On the 11th, TAT Communications was dissolved. TAT Communications International was moved under Columbia Pictures International Television. Around this time, the Coca-Cola name was largely scrubbed from the operation, being replaced by the nondescript initials CC for the time being. CC Telecommunications served as a de facto syndication arm of CPT, using a prototype distribution version of the logo. The only exception to the scrubbing of the name was Merv Griffin Enterprises, which, in keeping with its traditional byline tardiness, continued to use a Coca-Cola byline until February 8th. 
On February 23rd, the TriStar Pictures production company was transferred into its own entity, leaving Columbia Pictures Entertainment as a holding company. Around the same time, TriStar Television's logo disappeared. Now, the legal name was just that, a legal name. The actual company that operated it was known as Columbia Pictures Television. On March 7th, some more reorganisation happened vis-a-vis LEP Holdings. Norman Lear Productions became LTV Communications and Parentio Inc. became PTV Communications. Also, two new companies were formed, LEP Communications and PEP Communications. The former seemed to oversee Lear Pictures and LTV Communications, while the latter did the same for his Parentio counterparts. In this way, a blanket term could now be used to refer to all branches of the company, ELP Communications. This may have stood for Embassy LEP PEP, or as has previously been assumed, Embassy Limited Partnership. In July, the reorganization was made official. TriStar Television was split off from Columbia Pictures Entertainment as Columbia Pictures Television Inc. CC Telecommunications became Columbia Pictures Television Distribution, which was a division of the new entity. The programs formerly produced by TriStar continued to be distributed by Televentures, which introduced a new logo. CC Television Operations was folded into the new entity. Merv Griffin Enterprises continued under CPE Holdings for a while. This last bit changed on September 30th when Califon Productions was moved under a new entity called CP Transition Corp, part of Columbia Pictures Television. Since this is a television video, Columbia Pictures Entertainment will no longer appear. January 1989 saw a reanimation of the Columbia Pictures Television logo using footage from the 1981 Columbia Pictures logo. While it was an extremely cheap and cheesy looking job, it seemed to get the point across that the Columbia Pictures in the name no longer referred to Columbia Pictures Industries, but to Columbia Pictures Entertainment, so the old colour coding scheme no longer applied. On January 6th, Norman Lear re-entered the picture with the creation of Act 3 Television LP. This was another limited partnership. Columbia Pictures Television was the limited partner, and the general partner was Act 3 Television GP Inc., a unit of Act 3 Communications Inc., which had been known as Lear Television prior to the sale of Embassy to Coke. Production operations of this new partnership didn't officially commence until February 2nd. It was also known as Act 3 Television Venture. In September, Sony Corporation of America acquired Coke's 49% share in Columbia Pictures Entertainment. On October 19th, Califon Productions was merged into CP Transition Corp, which then took on that name. Then in November, Sony bought out the other 51%. Straight after that, they acquired the Goober Peters Entertainment Company, formerly Barris Industries. It became a subsidiary of Columbia Pictures Television. This also had two syndication divisions, Goober Peters Program Sales and Goober Peters Advertising Sales, and it was mostly involved in producing game shows. On July 11th, 1990, Televentures was dissolved resulting in distribution rights to many of its programs reverting to Columbia Pictures Television Distribution. Then, in November, Goober Peters' program and advertising sales were folded into Columbia Pictures Television Distribution. Goober Peters was now solely a film company, not a television company, although the few films it produced afterwards were made for television. In early 1991, Act 3 Television introduced its own logo. Previously, it had used in-credit text and the Columbia Pictures Television logo. In late 1991, a few things happened. On August 7th, Columbia Pictures Entertainment was renamed to Sony Pictures Entertainment, and in keeping with this, its television operations were reorganized under a group called Sony Television Entertainment. This was an internal corporate division, though its name was never used on screen. As usual... The Columbia byline wasn't removed from the Griffin logo until September 2nd. At this time, Califon Productions' corporate name was moved to the credits, 
so Wheel of Fortune no longer used a custom logo. Then, on October 10th, the hyphen was dropped from the name of TriStar Pictures and a new television studio was founded with that name, built from assets that Sony acquired from New World Television. This, along with Merv Griffin Enterprises, started operating under the umbrella of Sony Television Entertainment with a high degree of autonomy. John Feldheimer ran the new studio, continuing his role from New World Television. On March 7, 1992, Act 3 Television's logo was upgraded to a more stylish design with a black-white gradient background and a nice fading animation. In May, Sony started talking about starting its own cable channel, the Game Show Channel, in partnership with United Video Satellite Group. In July, the first entity involved in carrying this out was set up Sony Pictures Cable Ventures 1, Inc. In September, the byline, a Sony Pictures Entertainment Company, was added to all three studios' logos. In the case of Columbia and TriStar, this also meant the unveiling of totally new logos, which were painted by Michael Deese and Alan Rengold, respectively. These logos were not yet the official Columbia and TriStar logos, so to speak, so they used the old music and Columbia's soap operas continued to use the old logo. This was also when ELP Communications embarked on its final production, Beekman's World, a children's educational series in association with Columbia Pictures Television Distribution. This is notable because it used a funny version of the CBT logo with a rocket flying around the torch lady. On 23rd of November, the status of the game show channel progressed somewhat, with the establishment of TGSC Management Inc. Then on 2nd of December, this company struck deals to license game show libraries from other companies. These were the libraries of Barry and Enright Productions and Mark Goodson Associates. On December 4th, the Game Show Channel LP was created. Its general partners were Sony Pictures Cable Ventures and TGSC Management, while its limited partners were United Video Satellite Group Inc. and Mark Goodson Associates Inc. On December 7th, the licensing deals closed. The actual network was slated to launch the next year. However, the death of Mark Goodson 11 days later seems to have thrown a spanner in the works. In 1993, another logo was painted by Michael Diaz for Sony, this time for Merv Griffin Enterprises. It appeared in late January. In mid-April, possibly because of the new fiscal year, the old Columbia Pictures television logo disappeared. On 5th of May, Columbia Pictures Television Distribution set up a barter syndication division named Columbia Television Advertiser Sales. Around the same time, the in-name only Columbia Pictures Television division of CPT Holdings was folded in. Another change involving CPT Holdings was the renaming of Columbia Pictures International Television to Columbia TriStar International Television. It was now involved in production as well as distribution, and used a logo based on the Columbia TriStar home video logo that appeared the same year. On 27th of May, it set up a UK production company, Columbia TriStar Central Productions Limited, a joint venture with Central Independent Television, to produce The Upper Hand. Columbia had previously been co-producing this with Central. Interestingly, Sony owned its share in this new company via Sony Software BV, a European computer arm it owned in the Netherlands. But that's neither here nor there. In September, the proper music for the new Columbia Pictures television logo made its debut. However, the Beekman version instead stopped using any music for the time being. The soap operas continued using the old jingle. Also in September, the Goober Peters Entertainment Company went in name only as GPEC Inc. Then on October 7th, some proper music came for the new TriStar television logo. On January 1st, 1994, the old Columbia Pictures television jingle finally disappeared because the soap operas moved to the new one. The Beekman's World version also started using the new music around this time. 
Lots more reorganization happened in this year. First, on January 19th, PEP and PTV were merged into Parentio Pictures, which became a direct subsidiary of LEP Holdings and took on the PEP name. Then, on February 10th, the same thing happened with the Lear counterparts. The ELP situation was now much tidier, so the stage was set for the next move. On February 21st, the three main production studios were brought under the umbrella of a new division, Columbia TriStar Television, again run by John Feltheimer. They still operated as very much separate studios, but management became more consolidated. At the same time, Columbia Pictures Television Distribution began to be referred to internally as Columbia TriStar Television Distribution, but the old name continued to be used legally and on screen for the time being. The TriStar moniker was added to the Advertising Sales Division. In May, ongoing disputes within Mark Goodson's estate, which had already held up the launch of the game show channel, caused them to decide to pull out of the venture. Around this time, it was renamed to the game show Network. On June 6th, Mark Goodson Associates sold its stake in the partnership to the other partners. Just before this, on June 4th, Merv Griffin Enterprises was folded into Columbia TriStar Television, but its logo continued to appear until July 22nd. In August, TAT Communications International was folded into Columbia TriStar International Television. Then in September, a logo was introduced for Columbia TriStar Television. It was also around this time that an alternate jingle was introduced for TriStar Television. On December 1st, the Game Show Network finally launched. It aired game shows from Sony's extensive library as well as the Mark Goodson Library to which it still held a license. It was also this year that Columbia TriStar Television acquired Stuart Tele Enterprises Inc., another company that held a library of game shows. This was integrated into CPT Holdings. 1995 saw more changes. Firstly, in January, Columbia TriStar Central Productions introduced its own logo. Then, in July, John Feltheimer was promoted to head of Sony Television Entertainment, which ceased to exist shortly after. Sony's television operations were reorganized as the Columbia TriStar Television Group. The production studios continued operating the same way, albeit with a reduced degree of separation from the distribution company. Finally, on September 18th, Tandem Communications was dissolved. AEP Corp. was dissolved shortly after. On October 8th, Columbia TriStar International Television established SET India Private Limited, which started operating an Indian cable channel, Sony Entertainment Television, and its international version, Sony Entertainment Television Asia. On July 12, 1996, the production studios were further consolidated, now operating under the auspices of a new centralized production company, Columbia TriStar Television Inc. ELP and CPT now operated directly under this company name instead of Columbia Pictures Television. While this is hard to represent in the diagram due to the nitty gritty of the corporate structure, Columbia Pictures Television was actually a sub studio of the new unit. At the same time, Columbia TriStar Television Distribution finally became the legal and on screen name for the distribution company. Columbia TriStar International Television's logo was also updated to reflect the changes. As well as that, the Columbia TriStar Television Group started an animation unit, Adelaide Productions, which operated autonomously but used the Columbia TriStar Television name and logo. The cartoons produced by the studio used the two CTT logos interchangeably. In September, Columbia TriStar Central Productions became Columbia TriStar Carlton Productions Limited, reflecting a change in corporate parentage. Then, in October, the upper hand ended, so CTCP went in name only. It was replaced by Columbia TriStar Television UK Productions Limited. On February 18, 1997, Sony Entertainment Television was reorganized. Columbia TriStar International Television set up an entity in Singapore called SPE Networks Asia PTE Limited. The purpose of this entity was to run Asian versions of Sony's channels. SET India was moved under it. 
A CT Distribution LLC was set up in Delaware as a North American branch of SET Asia. It also took over the Latin American version of SET that was already up and running, commonly known as Canal Sony. On March 5th, 1997, Sony took a dormant entity called Soundstage Music Inc. and moved it under CPT Holdings, renaming it to AXN Network Inc. On March 17th, a new logo was introduced for the Game Show Network. On May 22nd, AXN actually launched. It is a kind of acronym for the word ACTION. On August 20th, an entity called Animation Investments Inc. was created in Delaware. Its purpose was to oversee the development of an animation-focused cable channel. Then, on October 11th, Game Show Network's license to most of the goods in library expired, marking the start of its infamous dark period, in which it fell back on lesser-known programs from Sony's own library. Also in October, Act 3 Television was renamed to Act 3 Productions. It commenced work in its last series, which was Channel Umpty 3, another children's educational show, in association with Adelaide Productions. Beekman's World ended in December, so ELP went in name only. On February 20th, 1998, Channel Umpty 3 ended, so Act 3 went in name only. On the same date, AXN Latin America Inc. was set up in Delaware. On April 18th, the Game Show Network's dark period ended when it renewed its license to the Goodson Library. On May 20th, Sony Pictures Entertainment Japan, which is a joint venture between CPE Holdings, Sony Pictures Entertainment and Sony Corporation, set up Animax Broadcast Japan Inc. This was a joint venture with Sunrise Inc., Toy Animation Company Limited, TMS Entertainment Company Limited and Nihon Ad Systems Inc. This entity's purpose was to run a satellite television channel dedicated to broadcasting anime. This channel launched on June 1st, and it was the culmination of the efforts of animation investments. On July 27th, the Advertising Sales Division was spun out as a separate entity, Columbia TriStar Television Advertiser Sales Company. A rather strange thing happened on the production side around the same time. All of the Columbia TriStar Television Group's production operations were merged into a partnership between Sony Pictures and Global Maritime Group, a cruise line company. This new partnership was called Global Entertainment Productions GmbH and Company Media and KG, and, as you can probably tell, operated out of Germany for some reason. The studio seemed to have continued operating with the same degree of autonomy, but for legal and copyright purposes, all the work was done by this company, at least for the 1998-1999 to season. An exception was TriStar Television, which needed to remain open to avoid changing the status of Early Edition, a series which it co-owned with CBS. This is the only program for which this was done. The strangest part, though, is that this was completely reversed in 1999. It went back to the old way. The only difference was that TriStar Television was shut down. However, because the copyright in Early Edition was co-owned by TriStar and CBS, the TriStar Television Corporation again continued to stay open. The actual production was done by Columbia TriStar Television, but TriStar Television remained the copyright holder in name only. At the same time, Columbia TriStar Television introduced an enhanced version of its logo, which actually used cheaper animation, but was apparently more suited to high definition. On September 20th, Columbia TriStar Television Distribution launched the so-called Screen Gems Network, a syndicated programming block consisting of reruns of series from the extensive libraries of Columbia, ELP, and Tandem. In May of the millennium year, Columbia TriStar Television finally stopped using its first logo for anything. Nine days later, Columbia TriStar Television Distribution launched the Columbia Showcase Theatre label for syndication reruns of Columbia Pictures Film Library. Early edition was cancelled, so TriStar Television Inc. was shut down as a production company. As well as that, Raystar Television went in name only after producing the made-for-television film Alley Cat Strike. Also this year, Sony Entertainment Television's logos were changed slightly. On the 1st of January 2001, the network production branch of Columbia TriStar Television was merged with Columbia Pictures Television to form Columbia TriStar Network Television. 
which encompassed operations of both CPT Inc. and CTT Inc. He continued to use the plain Columbia TriStar television logo. On the 1st of February, Sony took over complete ownership of the Game Show Network. The limited partnership was dissolved and reincorporated as Game Show Network LLC, a limited liability company owned by Sony Pictures Cable Ventures and TGSC Management. On February 23rd, a deal was closed to sell half of this LLC to LDIG GameNet Inc. LDIG stands for Liberty Digital, its corporate parent, which itself was part of Liberty Media. Liberty became the dominant partner, with Columbia TriStar taking the back seat and no longer giving the channel free access to its library. Also in this year, AXN's logo was changed slightly. You may remember what I said earlier about Early Edition being co-owned by TriStar and CBS. Well, Sony reckoned that this was becoming a trend. Since the financial interest in syndication, FinCEN laws were repealed by the FCC in the early 90s, networks seemed to want more and more to own a share in their programming so they could make a bundle on syndication. This was bad news for Columbia TriStar Network Television, since the bulk of its revenues came from syndication via Columbia TriStar Television Distribution. At this point, all the other major Hollywood studios had either acquired or set up their own network, but this path was blocked to Sony thanks to its Japanese ownership. Thus, a decision had to be made in relation to the seemingly loss-making future of Columbia TriStar Network Television. Thus, on October 25th, this Doom division was shut down, with the loss of 20% of the workforce. At the same time, Columbia TriStar Television Distribution was renamed to Columbia TriStar Domestic Television, but, as you can see, the old legal name was still used for copyright purposes on some shows. This newly renamed division took over production of all the old network shows. In the case of The King of Queens, Columbia TriStar Television Inc. remained as an in-name only production company because, as with TriStar and Early Edition, the show was co-owned by CBS. The group was streamlined, with all operations being moved under Columbia TriStar Domestic Television, even Columbia TriStar International Television. As well as that, the logo types were unified, with the same animation and imagery being used for the domestic and international logos. The newly renamed division also expressed hopes to work with next generation broadband technology. Then this whole next generation and innovation idea inspired another change in late 2002. On September 10th, Columbia Pictures Television was renamed to Sony Pictures Television, resulting in the first on-screen use of the Sony Pictures Bars logo. This pretty much marked the end of the Screen Gems network. Columbia TriStar International Television was also renamed to Sony Pictures Television International. This was also reflected by the UK company, and the advertising sales company. As you can see, the Columbia TriStar domestic television name and logo were still used by Sony on some programs for a while, along with the in-name only Columbia TriStar television distribution. In 2003, all the loose ends in Sony Pictures Television's corporate structure were mostly tied up, so now it was bars all the way in terms of logos, with a new animation being introduced for Sony Pictures Television International. On the 1st of May, an entity was set up under Sony Pictures Television International called SPTI China Inc. On 7th of July, AXN set up a European branch of the UK called AXN Europe Limited. Its purpose was to roll out European versions of this channel. In January 2004, SPE Networks Asia launched Asian versions of Animax in association with Animation Investments. On March 15th, Game Show Network was shortened to GSN with the tagline, The Network for Games. It expanded its focus from just game shows and started to show reality television and other competitions. At the end of the season, the in-name only Columbia TriStar Domestic Television was shut down. On June 7th, Sony Pictures Television International acquired a French game show production company, Starling, from the then Vivendi Universal, who had owned it under Canal+. Plus. <laughs> On July 13th, AXN Europe set up a subsidiary, AXN Northern Europe Limited. On October 25th, CPT Holdings set up an entity called SPTI Productions Russia Inc. It didn't do much at the time. Then, on November 24th, SPTI China started operating 
via a partnership called Hueso with Hualong Film Digital Production Company Limited, which was part of the China Film Group. Its logo combined elements of the Hua and Sony Pictures Television International logos. This was the first government-approved television joint venture in Communist China. On December 4th, AXN Europe launched an anime network in Eastern Europe called Anime Plus. In January 2005, AXN Latin America bought the Locomotion Channel from Liberty Media. This channel focused mainly on animation and was headquartered in Argentina. On August 1st, it was integrated into AXN Latin America as Animax Latin America in association with Animation Investments. On 20th of December, Sony Pictures Television Incorporated Culver Productions Inc., named after Culver City, in which Sony Pictures had been headquartered since 1989. Interestingly, both Columbia and Culver are derived from the Latin word for dove, food for thought. It was intended to be a direct-to-DVD label, but it ended up staying dormant for a number of years. On May 25, 2006, Horror Entertainment LLC was established. It was owned by Sony Pictures Cable Ventures. It was set up to run a horror film-based video-on-demand service that had been announced by Comcast and Sony. On June 1st, the design of the Animax logo was simplified. In August, Sony Pictures Television acquired Grouper Networks Inc., which operated the video website Grouper. On September 19th, Lionsgate Entertainment jumped on board the horror entertainment venture. On October 10th, it was formally made into a joint venture with Lionsgate and a holding company known as Comcast Horror Entertainment Holdings, LLC. On October 31st, it launched its service called Fearnet. On February 8th, 2007, SPTI Productions Russia acquired a 51% majority stake in Leanem OOO, also called Leanem Production Center. On April 11th, Anime Plus was rebranded as Animax Eastern Europe. Subsequently, The King of Queens ended, and so therefore did Columbia TriStar Television's role as a production company. Then, on June 5th, Animax launched in Germany under AXN Northern Europe. On June 28th, an entity was set up in the UK called SET Networks Africa UK Limited. Its purpose was to run a satellite version of Sony Entertainment Television in South Africa. The next day, Sony's international cable networks were moved under a new holding company, SPE Networks Holdings EMEA LLC, incorporated in Delaware. This discrepancy in dates seems odd, so it may be related to time zone differences. On July 12th, Canal Sony changed its logo to a more unique color scheme. On July 16th, Grouper became Cracklelink, freely streaming film and television from Sony's library as well as some original productions to multiple platforms. On December 14th, Sony Pictures Television International acquired a minority stake in a Dutch reality television production company, Tuvalu Media BV. On December 21st, Liberty Media set up another subsidiary, Liberty Genius Inc. The word genius probably comes from rearranging the phonemes in the pronunciation of GSN. Either way, this company bought Canadian casual gaming company Fun Technologies Inc. This included Worldwinner.com Inc., an online tournament website. As part of the merger, Liberty Genius took over more of GSN's stake, and Worldwinner was made a game show network subsidiary, rebranded as a GSN service. On the same date, the corporate entity SET India was renamed to Multi Screen Media Private Limited. In 2008, GSN introduced another new logo. On March 8th, Culver Productions became Culver Entertainment and started producing the spectacular Spider-Man in association with Adelaide Productions. This ended up being a cable and syndication program rather than direct-to-DVD as the company had originally been set up to do. On March 27th, Sony Pictures Television International acquired a 15% stake in Gogglebox Entertainment, a startup UK production company co-owned by Matt Steiner and Adam Wood. The stake was owned by CPE Holdings, but managed by CPT Holdings. Later that year, SPTI made another investment in a Dutch company. It set up a holding company, 2JS Productions BV, and used this as a takeover vehicle to acquire the television and mobile entertainment company, 2A Traffic NV, 
on June the 4th. More importantly, this company had a format licensing subsidiary, Two-Way Traffic International BV, formerly Celador International, known for holding the rights to the format of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, among other things. It also included the divisions Two-Way Traffic Mobile and Intelligence. The former was a mobile solutions company and the latter a game show format development company. On August 1st, an Asia-Pacific version of Sony Entertainment Television was launched on September 16th, the format licensing operations of Sony Pictures Television International were all merged into Two-Way Traffic International. In January 2009, Sony Pictures Television acquired another interactive entertainment and format licensing company, Embassy Row. Two weeks later, Sony Pictures Television International acquired a 50% stake in Teleset, a Colombian production company which was already doing shows licensed from Two-Way Traffic International. On April Fool's Day of that year, Sony Pictures Television International was shut down and folded into Sony Pictures Television, citing reasons to do with the globalization of entertainment. Then, on April 13th, SPTI Productions Russia's stake in Lean-M was increased to 67%. From July 1st to August the 3rd, Animax Asia used a red version of its logo. In September, Culver Entertainment went in name only because they gave the Spider-Man TV rights back to Marvel. In October, Sony Pictures Television expanded its international operations by establishing Toro Produzioni SPA, an Italian production and distribution company which also operated in Spain. On November 19th, Liberty Media transferred its Liberty Entertainment subsidiary to DirecTV. This included Liberty Digital, which at this point owned 65% of GSN. In 2010, Lean-M, the Russian company, became a wholly owned subsidiary of SPTI Productions Russia, which was renamed to Sony Pictures Television Productions Russia on January 21st. The same thing happened around the same time for the Chinese company. Also, a new logo was introduced for Starling, the French company. On March 22nd of this year, Sony increased its stake in Tuvalu to 60%, formally purposing it as its Benelux production arm. On April 21st, Sony set up a joint venture with Discovery Communications and IMAX, called 3D Netco LLC, with the intention of launching a 3D TV channel. On May the 3rd, a new logo designed for Animax was unveiled. It was blue in Asia, purple in Latin America, and green in Europe. On May 13th, CPE Holdings set up a company called CPE US Networks Inc. with the intention of launching a new cable channel in the United States. Again, it is managed under Sony Pictures Television. On July 12th, Sony Pictures Television created Floresta, a joint venture production company in Brazil. In September, two-way traffic was downsized with intelligence being transferred into Tuvalu Media and two-way traffic mobile disappearing presumably integrated into something higher up the Sony ladder. On October 14th, a company called Entertainment Networks UK Limited was established under SPE Networks Holdings EMEA, designed to run UK versions of Sony's cable channels. One week later, the Sony Movie Channel made its debut. This is a cable channel that runs films from the Sony Pictures Library all the time. It is run by CPE US Networks. On October 31st, FearNet expanded its service with a traditional linear cable channel offered alongside the video on demand service. On February 13th, 2011, 3D Netco launched its channel known as 3Net. It is a cable channel carried exclusively by DirecTV which shows both informational and entertainment programming. In March, the terms of Sony and DirecTV's joint venture changed significantly. DirecTV sold 5% of GSN back to Sony and handed back control of the network, even though Sony was still the minority shareholder. It reserved the right to sell 18% of the venture to Sony. On April 7th, Entertainment Networks UK launched another international version of Sony Entertainment Television using a similar blue logo type. Around the same time, the Asian versions of the logo were once again changed slightly. An updated AXN logo was also introduced this year. On May the 1st, Animax Latin America was changed to Sony Spin due to its failure to adhere to a mostly anime-focused schedule. This new brand clearly comes under Sony Entertainment Television, but it is technically still owned by Animation Investments. On June the 23rd, 
Sony Pictures Television formed a UK production company, Victory Television Limited, as a joint venture with Victoria Ashbourne, who had previously worked for them as Senior Vice President of Creative Development under Sony Pictures Television International. However, apparently her shareholding amounts to less than a percent of a percent. This company took over the UK version of Millionaire from two-way traffic. On July the 12th, another US cable channel company was set up called CPE US Networks 2 Inc. A week later, it launched Cine Sony Television, a Spanish language entertainment channel. In early 2012, AXN started an in-house production division, AXN Original X Productions, which produced the series The Firm. On January 19th, 2012, Entertainment Networks UK acquired Dolphin Broadcasting. This included a company called Dolphin Broadcasting Limited and a 75% stake in a similar company called Dolphin TV Limited. These companies operated the UK satellite channels Movies for Men and Men and Movies, focusing on particular cinematic genres. On March 1st, Sony Pictures Television acquired another UK production company, Silver River Productions Limited. One month later, most of two-way traffic's operations were folded into Sony Pictures Television as Sony Pictures Television International Formats. However, the two-way traffic logo continues to appear on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and related programs, except for the UK version, which, as I mentioned, is produced by Victory. On May the 3rd, a UK and Ireland version of Sony Movie Channel was launched by Entertainment Networks UK. It used a new logo type, which was then introduced globally 20 days later. In June 2012, a new logo was introduced for Embassy Row. Then, on August 23rd, Sony Pictures Television acquired a majority stake in yet another UK production company, Left Bank Pictures Limited. On November the 8th, DirecTV exercised its option, selling 18% of GSN to Sony. On January 10th, 2013, Men and Movies, one of the Dolphin channels, was renamed to More Than Movies, changing its focus. On February 1st, the Animax logo reverted to its 2006 design, except in Germany. On April Fool's Day, CPE US Networks 3 Inc. was incorporated. Soon after, it announced plans to launch a new classic film-oriented channel named Get TV in autumn, but those plans ended up on hold. On July the 12th, an in-name-only UK company was set up named Scarlet Media Limited. Five days later, a similar company was set up named Electric Ray Limited. On August the 1st, Sony Pictures announced that it was creating a new joint venture with former Fox Filmed Entertainment CEO Tom Rothman named TriStar Productions. It would be involved in both film and television, producing films for release via TriStar Pictures and television programs for distribution through Sony Pictures Television. On August the 6th, Rothman's company, Winter Productions Inc., was turned into a joint venture with Sony Pictures and renamed TriStar Productions Inc. It wasn't officially launched until September the 1st. Hopefully this company will soon return the TriStar name and logo to television production uh, again. On August 22nd, it was announced that Scarlet Media was going to be a company specializing in informational programming owned by former Discovery Channel executive Simon Andrea in association with Sony Pictures. However, on September 11th, it was shut down, and on October 22nd, it was announced that Simon Andre had pulled out and instead was getting a job with Fox. Also in October, Entertainment Networks UK launched a UK and Ireland version of Animax. On December 16th, Tuvalu Media joined up with Carmine, a financing firm, to buy back the 60% of it owned by Sony. It is now independent again. On January 15, 2014, Electric Ray was unveiled. It is to be a joint venture company between Sony Pictures and former BBC Entertainment Commissioner Carl Warner. Its purpose is similar to that originally intended for Scarlet Media. Then, on February 3rd, CPE US Networks 3 launched Get TV. It is an over-the-air broadcast network, despite its ultimate Japanese ownership. On March 19th, Sony Pictures Television Productions UK Limited acquired a stake in KDMW Media Limited, a company jointly owned by TV executives Kieran Doherty and Matt Worthy in Belfast. It was renamed to Stellify Media Limited and is the first Sony owned production company on the island of Ireland. They haven't come down here to the Republic yet, mind you, but I guess now is just a matter of time.
Finally, in April, a new logo was introduced for Canal Sony, and that's basically it for now. Special thanks to Shadid329 and the CLG Wiki for help with putting all this together. My other sources include the Delaware and New York Corporation Registers, Corporation Wiki, WISC, CompanyCheck.co.uk, Bloomberg Business Week, the Los Angeles Times, and the book Screen Gems, A History of Columbia Pictures Television from Cone to Coke, written by Jeb H. Perry. Also, thanks to my supportive viewers, even the impatient ones. They could probably learn a thing or two from the experience of being a Rayman fan between 2006 and 2010, or a Half-Life fan from 2010 to the present day. Uh, speaking of Half-Life, for those of you who subscribe to this channel for physics videos, I'm afraid to say that you can't expect any more of those until the summer, when I hope to resume work on my atomic structure simulation project with the Source Engine. Apart from that, I hope you enjoyed the video. <laughs>